Here with Brian Dozier. Brian, first thing I have to ask you is, how does a kid growing up in Mississippi end up with Derek Jeter as his role model? You know what? Uh, uh, my whole family, I've always been a big baseball fan. I grew up a Braves fan and stuff, but uh, ever since I can remember, you know, big, big, big baseball fan. And then, then Jeter came along, and uh, I was shortstop growing up, and and everything and you kind of you kind of take the best shortstop in the game and want to be like him and it just so happened to be Jeter and ever since then even to today it's he's always been kind of my uh kind of my guy I guess I looked up to wanted to be like did everything like him growing up so that's uh, and it's pretty cool to share the same field with him today so did you copy the stance growing up the wristbands what kind of things would you do to try and emulate him? uh well, Ever since I was like 12 years old, 13, I, uh, I saw that he always wore a wristband on his left arm or whatever, a sleeve, some, court, some sort, anything like that. And even to today, it's, it's, if, I don't, if I don't have a wristband on my left hand, then uh, my left wrist, and I kind of feel naked, so to speak. So that's, that's kind of one of the biggest things. And then just the way he plays the game, uh, like a blue-collar type guy that plays, plays the game the right way and that kind of always running balls out, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the biggest um, admiration I have of him. So. How would you take his retirement news? I feel like you must have been pretty upset when you heard yeah you know what it, it, but you know I guess legends so to speak have to hang them up sooner or later and uh, and you know he's had an awesome career oh, one of the best uh, shortstops uh, to ever play the game in my opinion if not one of the best players and uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a joy watching him for the past 20 years or so he's made a, a deep impact uh, not only here in New York but all across uh, the world in the game of baseball so he's been the one of the best ambassadors I've ever seen of the game so now I know you know when you're out on the field you get a chance for a little chit chat are you looking forward to the opportunity to try and pick his brain more and is that something you're nervous about at all yeah well it's uh, like I said he was my idol growing up he's kind of the guy I always look for uh, look to do and just everything like so it's like I said it's one honor to share the field with him and uh, even another to maybe try to pick his brain here sooner or later maybe when he comes back to Minnesota for the last time and that sort of thing and uh, it's always been baseball chatter and talk on the bases that kind of thing but yeah I'd love to love to sit down or talk and get more in depth about a lot of different things that'd be pretty cool you're having a terrific year you're one of just a couple guys through two months of this season who has double digit homers and steals could be an all-star this year and if you were not only would it be in your home park but you might be running out there next to Derek Jeter have you thought about that yeah you know what it's um it's something that you really don't try to think about, but at the same time, it's brought to light a lot of different ways, and uh, we get so much information on that nowadays and stuff. So, and being Jeter's last year, it could uh, it could be pretty special, to be honest with you. I'm not going to really look too far ahead. Uh, you never know what could happen, but at the same time, uh, anytime you get the chance to be on the same team, uh, let alone the same field as Derek Jeter, it's, it's going to be pretty special. So, is it true you can solve a Rubik's cube in less than two minutes? Less than two minutes. We did a twins did a promotion the other day. I had to solve it uh, uh, one live cut, so uh, in a minute and thirty. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's something I've done for a few years. My nephew had a Rubik's cube about three years ago and didn't know how to do it. So I said, you know what, I'll uh, I'll study how to do it and all that kind of stuff. Ever since then, it's been pretty. It's my little go-to on the plane rides and stuff. You challenge guys on the plane and in the clubhouse. And no one knows. No one knows how to do it. So it's kind of like you do it. You get your time in the sun. That's it. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, continue to taunt them with the Rubik's cube skills and continue success this season, Brian. All right, thank you. Appreciate. It. Back to you. Good. Cool. Okay, I'm ready. Cool. When you hear Masahiro Tanaka and the way he's been pitching, is there sort of a, a legend, uh, almost a Loch Ness monster quality going around about the tales of his splitter? Yeah, you know what? He's uh, he's new to the league. Everybody's trying to adjust the way he throws, and uh, for a guy, uh, you know, to come over and do what he's done is is one thing, especially you know in the in the major leagues and stuff. But everybody's trying to t adjust to how he throws and all the different pitches that he throws and stuff. It's not a prototype to, for American guy to do the same thing in, uh, here in America. So it's kind of. Uh, like I said, everybody's kind of adjusting, and yeah, he's got great stuff. He's got off to a great start, and uh, you know, we, we have a lot of information now on him for the first two months, watching a lot of films. So it's going to be uh, it, it's going to be good today, a good little battle. Are you curious to see what that splitter looks like up close in person? Well, you know what, we faced him in uh, we faced him in spring training, and uh, we got a chance. Uh, pretty much all the starters got a chance to see him a couple of times through. So uh, you kind of, uh, and of course, as you know, you know, spring training is a lot different. The velo's not there, all that kind of stuff. We kind of got a chance to see all his different pitches. Is probably not uh, 
precise as he has them today. But at the same time, we have kind of got to feel what he's trying to do to us, and we'll see what happens. So there's not an intimidation factor when it's an unknown who's dominating the league. You, you don't look at it like that, at least. No, no. If you, I think if you uh, if you look at it like that, you might as well just not even step into the box. So it's kind of one of those things. We're ready for a battle. Uh, it, it's the big leagues. Every guy on that mil, uh, on the on the mound is pretty good. So, and like I said, he's got off to a great start. We'll see what happens today. So.